Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one is entitled Earth Hosting at Least Three Planet X System Objects. Now, as I have said in many previous articles, the evidence that the Planet X system of stellar cores have not only attached themselves to the Sun, but also the Earth, is now overwhelming. I have written extensively about the effects on the Sun and how the Sun is weakening and going dark as a result of their presence. The evidence for their presence is now mounting, but the one irrefutable piece of evidence that they are in orbit around the Earth is the numerous ocean recession events that have occurred around the world. And you may look at Article 188, which is entitled What is Causing the Ocean to Recede All Over the World, for more details on that. Now, here's one of the stellar cores connecting to the Sun in the Sun's corona. There's the matter connection. It's in the form of a vortex that they usually make with the Sun and that allows them to remain stationary with respect to a point on the surface of the Sun. And uh, so this is some of the evidence. We have many, many images, SDO images. They appear in LASCO images, in stereo images. They are clearly in the sun's corona. And um, this is the evidence we have. It is overwhelming. We also have overwhelming evidence that they are affecting the Earth, that the Earth is hosting them because we have these unprecedented ocean recession events that have occurred in 2017, 2018, all over the world. And these are tidal events that can only be caused by tidal forces. And the moon causes tides, so we have to have objects that cause a stronger tidal effect on the Earth than the Moon does. And this is, of course, the stellar cores. There are so many in the Sun and um, affecting the Sun and being hosted by the Sun. It's also very likely, of course, that they uh, have attached themselves to the Earth as well. Now, only an object, as I said, uh, exerting a stronger tidal force than the moon could possibly cause such severe ocean recession, which must be tidal in nature as the water returns many hours later, just like it does with a normal tide. These objects have a weak gravitational effect for the huge mass, which seems to be as a result of an inability to generate energy in the core. And I've written extensively about that. This seems to be the reason why they are attracted to objects that can still generate that energy in their cores. And this is the reason they are attracted to the sun and its planets. It is likely that every single planet in the solar system has gained some members of the Planet X system as satellites. Jupiter seems to have captured quite a few, as its number of satellites seems to have gone from 16 to 69, but most likely this number will keep on going up as more and more of these objects seem to be coming into the solar system. They start out looking uh, black in SDO images, but eventually start emitting light. So the fact that new dark ones keep being observed suggests that new ones are arriving all the time. These objects also come in widely varying sizes, and we see a very large one within uh, a CME coming from the Sun, and this object is so large, it's about the same size as this circle, which indicates the, the, the size of the Sun. And since this object is within a CME that it has uh, just left uh, the surface of the Sun, this object has to be very close to the Sun, and therefore we can do a size comparison with the Sun. And we can see this object is about the same size as the Sun. Now, there seems to uh, be quite a few of these stellar cores that have attached themselves to the Earth, as the photographs we will see below uh, will attest. Now, in the first photograph, we see one that was at the time emitting red light. So, this is the object here. 
and uh, so they emit light because they connect electrically to the earth and thus the matter they draw from the earth forms a cloud of ionized material around them much like the comb of a comet. This seems therefore to be the reason why they look like they are enveloped in a cloud which gives off light in a certain color. Comets also emit a lot of visible light because they discharge the solar capacitor. In other words, they emit light as a result of the sun's generation of energy. And for details on that um, and an explanation of these electrical effects, because it is an electrical effect, you may look at article 170 entitled Comets, Planets and Cross Displacements where I further explain that comets uh, are not dirty snowballs. They are objects like asteroids and they emit light because they draw a current of charged particles from the sun and from its rings or nebula clouds of positive ions. So uh, stellar cores seem to emit light in a similar way to comets. They absorb matter from the sun or the planets. This matter forms a new gaseous outer layer around the object. The outer layer therefore becomes a new atmosphere. The stellar cores also seem to share the outer layers of materials when they arrive at the sun's corona and may therefore do the same when they make contact with the Earth's outer negative layer, such as the Earth's outer Van Allen belt. Once they have drawn enough matter and thus gained a certain amount of energy from their host objects, they start emitting light from the new atmosphere they have acquired. And that atmosphere is acquired, of course, at the expense of that solar system object that is hosting them. However, stellar cores would not draw current from the solar capacitor when they first enter the solar system because they are so depleted in electrons that they do not have an outer negative layer like normal celestial bodies have. And it is only once they have attached themselves to a solar system body that they are able to draw current from the solar capacitor. So they do not emit light as they enter the solar system, they have to actually go up and uh, become attached to a solar system body, make contact with the outer negative layer, and thus draw electrons from that host body before they can start uh, being able to emit light. So this object's most likely been attached to the Earth for quite some time. It has drawn quite a lot of matter and energy from the Earth. It's now able to emit red light from uh, the gaseous atmosphere it has gained from the Earth. Um, so here, uh, as I said, we see this object. Now this object uh, remained in the same position and was captured by GFP in March in the same position for an extended period of time. And stellar cores are also often observed to stay stationary with respect to a point on the sun which they have made a matter connection. And this is a uh, detail in article 227 uh, entitled Stellar Cores Affecting Earth and Possible Connection to Volcanic Eruptions. So uh, these objects uh, are connecting to the Earth they have uh, attached themselves to the Earth. They are not likely ever to leave. Once attached, they will stay attached. And they will keep on drawing uh, material and energy from the Earth and possibly become brighter and emit brighter light as time goes on. And they will be affecting the Earth. And as I said, there is a connection between them and volcanic eruptions. They will have some other effects on the Earth as well, which I have mentioned in other articles. Now here we see another image that uh, caught by GFP in a webcam from Germany. And this is from October 31st, 2016. Uh, webcam over Germany. Now here we see three light sources. There's a very bright uh, and large one in the middle and then we see this pink one, pinkish one, and this another white one. So um, we see three of them and we also see uh, clouds, chemtrail clouds. You can see they are straight line clouds. So these are fake clouds. Uh, usually produced by uh, 
chemtrails. Uh, but these clouds are clearly in front of this object and also this object. So this means that these objects cannot be lens flares and uh, they are real objects in the sky. And they're obviously emitting light. Uh, these are not objects that could possibly be reflecting light. For example, they cannot be the moon because the moon cannot be seen so close to the sun. And obviously the brighter object will be taken to be the sun. I don't think it's the sun, it's a sun simulator. The real sun would look yellow and this object looks white. And um, as we know, we don't actually seem to be seeing the real sun from the Earth's surface very often, um, possibly just about never, because the sun simulators are attempting to hide these objects in the sky. But as we can see, we have three uh, real objects and all three are emitting light and are therefore light sources. So the fact that we have chemtrail clouds in front tells us that uh, they cannot be lens flares. None can be the moon, as the moon cannot be seen uh, when so close to the sun's position. Now, uh, it is possible that the brightest object is the sun simulator. In fact, I think it is. It is. And, but it would be in front of the real sun. And, uh, um, but... Um, it would therefore move at about the same rate as the sun or about the same speed as the sun in the Earth. But it's not yellow, so um, in fact none of them are yellow. This one is uh, pinky orange, this one is white, uh, and this one seems white as well. No, they seem to be surrounded by a pink uh, kind of light. It could be coming from this one. Uh, but um, they are obviously white, not yellow, like the real sun would be. So we do seem to have at least two stellar cores being observed from the Earth's surface. One would be the sun simulator, the other two uh, would be stellar cores. And these are other um, uh, frames from the same uh, webcam, also from GFP's video. And uh, this is, again, from October of 2016. And we see uh, that uh, these frames are about 10 minutes apart. So uh, the sun simulator moves with respect to these objects, whilst the other two objects seem to remain stationary. You see the sun simulator, or the real indicating the sun's real position, uh, is in front of... Uh, the pinky orange object here and then it seems to move downwards in this direction towards this other object and it's getting closer to it. We can now see the object but it remains in the same place in the sky. It's not moving whilst the sun or the sun simulator is moving as time uh, goes on. You see over here it's covering up uh, the, the white object uh, lower down. So the sun, or the, and therefore the sun simulate, is obviously moving. The two objects are not moving. And this is quite significant. So the objects um, are, do not seem to move. And this is like the objects that attach themselves to the sun, the stellar cores. They also remain stationary with respect to a point on the sun. So this shows us that these objects or stellar cores, and that they are attached to the Earth, um, not attached to the Sun. Now, the object in the photograph, of course, cannot be lens flares because they are behind a cloud. They are not the same color as the brightest light source, and they do not move with the light source, the main light source, which would be the Sun simulator. Now, a lens flare is always in front of the background objects because it is created by the lens. So that's the first point that tells us these cannot be uh, lens flares because we have clouds in front of them. Now, a lens flare is uh, not as bright as the main object, but it is the same color. And this is because a lens flare, uh, lens flare is a secondary image of a real object object. So they simply just not as bright as that object, but they have to be of the same color. 
Now, as this is a webcam, which is thus not moving, the lens flare would have to move with the object creating it. And we do not see these object, these two objects moving with the sun simulator or the brightest light source. These two uh, uh, lights, uh, lights here, these are lens flares. So you can see they are in the foreground of the image, so they are created by the lens and inside the lens, so they would always appear to be in the foreground or in front of the background objects. But these two objects cannot be lens flares. Now, therefore, the objects seen here are real objects, which are, although not nearly as bright as the sun to me, are also bright light sources in the sky. The sun, the moon, the planets, and the stars appear to move across the sky from the Earth's surface because of the Earth's rotation. So uh, we always see every object do what the brightest light source here did. It moves across the sky because the Earth is rotating. This is why the stars seem to move in the sky at night, why the moon always moves in the sky. And it's not because these objects uh, are moving, uh, although they are, everything's in motion. But that fast motion across the sky is actually due to the Earth's rotation. And the Earth goes through one rotation every 24 hours. So um, the, the planets, the stars, they all move in the Earth's sky. Any stellar core in orbit, or even if stationary, with respect to a point on the Sun's surface, would appear to move with the Sun across the sky from Earth. So uh, this is illustrated here. If we have a stellar core attached to the Sun, it, whether it's in orbit around the Sun, uh, it would and therefore moving with respect to the sun. But most of the time they stay uh, in the same position with respect to the sun for quite some time. So as the Earth rotates, we should be able to see the two of them moving together. And even if it was in orbit around the sun, we may see it move to here, uh, slowly move here, but it will still move with the sun. It wouldn't stay stationary in the sky like we see these two objects move. And so uh, this is what we would see if these stellar cores were attached to the sun. We'd see them moving with the sun in the sky. And this did not happen. Uh, so even if the largest light source is not the real sun, but a device simulated to say, it would be expected to be moving at the same speed as the real sun across the sky. So we would still see these objects move with the sun simulator. Now the fact that these objects appear to remain stationary in the sky shows that they are not attached to the sun, but must be attached to the Earth. Uh, now. Of the objects that orbit the Earth, only artificial geosynchronous satellites are supposed to be able to remain stationary with respect to a point on the Earth's surface. However, stellar cores are known to remain stationary with respect to the Sun's surface in the Sun's corona as they appear to become a part of the Sun when they make a matter connection with the Sun, which looks like a vortex or particles being drawn from the Sun toward the stellar core. It therefore seems that the two light sources which remain stationary whilst the Sun simulator moves are stellar cores. And since these are emitting a very different color of light from the object in figure 4, uh, we, are, we therefore have observational evidence of at least three stellar cores which have made Earth their Host. So this object in figure four, it's the red one. Let's go back there. As you can see, it looks quite different from these other two. And uh, it's emitting red light. Seems to uh, possibly be, uh, this one seems to possibly be even closer to the Earth than the other two. The other two seem to be a bit further away. This one seems to be almost 
and it's possible that they even touch or even come into the Earth's atmosphere because these stellar cores go, uh, go into the Sun's uh, atmosphere, into the Sun's corona, which is the Sun's atmosphere. So it's possible that they will even come into the Earth's atmosphere as well. And this one, uh, this one is of course from this year. It's possible that they are coming closer and closer to the Earth's surface as they gain more and more energy, and therefore the gravitational effects will also increase. And this is likely why we are now seeing these unprecedented um, ocean recession events. In in 2007, 2018, these objects most likely have been attached to the air for quite some time, but the effects are increasing slowly. So, um, so the one in figure four is different from the two we've seen in figures uh, five and six. So this means that we have at least three that have attached themselves to the earth. Now, since these objects are initially dark and since once attached they are not likely to disconnect from their host body, the fact that these objects are bright light sources indicates that they have been here for quite a long time and have absorbed a lot of energy from the Earth. These objects will have a pronounced effect on the Earth, which is likely to increase with time, and as these objects continue to gain energy, if the number of, uh, of objects hosted by the Earth keeps increasing, this effect will increase even more. Tidal effects, severe storms, and volcanic eruptions are some of those effects. And you may look at Article 237 entitled Hawaiian Island and Mega Tsunamis for more details. So, in conclusion, there is overwhelming evidence that Planet X system stellar cores are found in the inner solar system, and both the Sun and the Earth are hosting these objects and thus being affected by them. There is observational evidence that at least three stellar cores have made her Earth their host. These objects' effects on the Earth range from causing earthquakes, breaking up the Earth, creating tidal events, and causing volcanic eruptions and strange weather events. And here are the references. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.